most important thing that individual nurses can do to change the image of nursing? What I find myself saying lately is we need to talk about what we do and that and honestly and I started to say that because I get emails from people or comments on the well blog saying I'm so glad you wrote this column because now I can give it to my mother or my husband or whoever and they'll understand what I do at work all day and you know at first I just found that very flattering and then I thought you know this is not good nurses should feel that we can always talk about what we're doing and I wish that more of us did that. So I think that's the start, is for nurses to talk about their work as thoroughly and legitimately as anyone else who sees themselves as a professional. And, you know, not shy away from things like, yes, we do clean up people who are incontinent, and we do empty bedpans, and we do hold people and rub their backs while they vomit, and we also make decisions about does this seem like the right dose of this medication and you know should I call a condition on this person and does such and such need to come look at this wound because I don't think it looks right and I'm a little worried about it um, so that's what I like about nursing that's being in that in-between spot and you've got from the most mundane to the most important and scientifically challenging and we need to talk about all of it and really get out there the truth of what it is that nurses really do. Have you done any columns on nurse research? Is that something you might see as a future topic? Um, I have not. I have written columns that draw on research that's been done relevant to nursing. So I had an op-ed about safe staffing and I wrote about Linda Aiken at University of Pennsylvania and quoted Kathleen Bartholomew about nurse on nurse bullying. And I'd have to I have to think about the way to do that. It's not that I object to the idea. It's just finding a way to work it in so that it's part of a narrative. Mm -hmm. And probably just doing a narrative about research that's come out, it's not going to be that interesting to my readers. So I have to find things that are relevant, find the story, then see if there's relevant work out there and pull that in. I mean, one thought I have is... I recently did some night shifts because I wanted to write about night shift because night shift feels like they never get any attention, you know, and um, and it's very hard to stay up all night taking care of people. So I did some night shifts, and then it's just deciding when to write that column. But I know there's data that shows the effects of staying up all night, how it can affect care decisions, and how nurses actually do better if they're allowed to take short naps, if every nurse on the night shift was allowed to take a scheduled nap, what a difference it would make in terms of alertness and ability to respond. And so that's something that I would want to pull in. And I know, I'm pretty sure it's nurses who's, who have done that research. So I have to have the story first and then get the data. You yourself writing a column for the New York Times from, from your nursing career. Uh, well, I had this first piece that came out in the Science Times, and then I got a book contract from that piece, and it's really a story of how all these things fell into place, and being in the right place at the right time, and being able to write and have a story that no one else was telling, so that's the big picture background, but so I got a book contract, and then my agent who helped me get the book contract is also the agent for Tara Parker Pope, the editor of the Well blog at the New York Times. And it was actually Lynn who approached me saying Tara was interested in what I want to write for Well. She was looking for a nurse. And then I emailed her and she really helped me work out what the columns are like. And you know, now I feel like an 800 word column is, you know, it's, it's not second nature, but I get it. But at the start, I. I wasn't used to even writing things and thinking about the word count so and sort of the arc of the story and what they want it to be and that's how I got started and then ended up actually listening a lot to the comments from other nurses writing and saying well you're writing all these feel-good stories about nursing but there's hard things about nursing too and I thought they're right and then I tried to find ways to talk about those aspects of the job and just gradually tried to bring in more and more things. 
Do you get a lot of your ideas from nurses that give you feedback on your call? I would say thoughts and directions, but my ideas about specific columns all come from work. But, yeah, I mean, people will say, oh, what about this, or think about that, or... Um, and then there's also all kinds of great ideas, like someone said, well, what about male nurses, and would I want to write a column about that? And I would love to talk to some of the men I work with and write about that. I just I haven't seen in my mind a way to do that beyond just let's talk about being a male nurse which would only reinforce the stereotype so there's ideas that I can't me personally I can't figure out a way to get a column for them because I don't have a story hook sometimes there are stories that it would I wouldn't be able to explain in 800 words or a few more why this matters and other times they just come together beautifully so.